Well, happy Tuesday, friends. This is Good News Today, Will Davis Jr. with our final textual devotional. I'm going to do a few more, I think, answering questions. And if I just get questions for Thursday and Friday, or Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, then I'll do a wrap-up on Friday and we'll be done with this one. But um, it's hard to believe we're here. So, send cards, questions, comments, complaints to SR Pastor, Senior Pastor at acfellowship.org. Okay, have you ever been in a situation where things deteriorated so rapidly, relationally, professionally, health-wise, you kind of get to the end of it and go, how, how do we get here? You wake up standing over a loved one in the ER, or you wake up out of a job the day after you're working, or whatever. This is kind of how we end Genesis 3. In Genesis 1, God steps into chaos and creates man and woman. In Genesis 2, he performs the first wedding ceremony. It's beautiful. Adam says, whoa, man. Genesis 3, the evil one shows up and tempts, and now it's just like things, that, it's like um, that Jenga game. You start pulling out blocks and everything just collapsed. And at the end, by the time we get to end of Genesis, God has, had to make, God has to make a defensive move to protect humans from themselves. And the, the garden has been lost. It's the Milton's paradise lost. The garden has been lost. Um, death has been initiated. Birth pangs are now part of the birth process. Grueling work is now part of cultivation. And everything is spun out of control because of the rebellion of two humans. So, verse 24, he drove the man. Again, it's Adam, not Eve. He was driven out too, but he's, this is on Adam. Out at, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, that eastern entrance and east represents out of the presence of God, he stationed the cherubim, the cherubim, that's real important, and the flaming sword, which turned every direction, this lightsaber style, to guard the way to the tree of life. I think that angel or angels are probably still there. So cherubim are it's a, it's a it's a Hebrew construct. It's a participle. It's the burning ones. It's the same word used in Isaiah six of cherubim guarded the throne of God and chanted back and forth, holy, holy, holy. It's the ones who are on fire and burning, but obviously not consumed. It's the nature of these angels. They're burning ones. The flaming sword is really interesting. Something unique to heaven. That's a, a tool used by God to separate now now i want you to do this juxtaposition of god walking in the garden in the cool of the day that fellowship with adam and eve to now they're excommunicated and a sword is drawn and burning ones are there to keep them from coming back in and again it was a love it was a love move because if they wander back in and take that fruit of the tree of life they're stuck in their death state forever i've talked about this before but i want you to think forward to exodus 19 when God calls Moses and the Israelites up to the Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. And the mountain is on fire, and there's a cloud, and there's lightning. He said, don't let anybody touch the mountain, lest they die. It's exactly the same thing as it is here. There's, there's burning ones, there's angels put in place to keep humans away from God. Lest they go further and die even more. It's a heartbreak. And, and I hope you see the descent into chaos that is told out in Genesis 1 through 3. And what the scriptures tell us then is, is how God issues a plan, initiates a plan to dig us out of the hole. And it goes from the low point of Genesis 3. They're cast out. A burning one is sent there to keep them out. Climbs the hill all the way up to Calvary in the New Testament. Where the Son of Man hung between heaven and earth and felt the full weight of God's judgment and sin and began the process of giving us back the garden and giving us back our God. So every chapter, at Genesis 4 to Revelation 20, before 21 and 22 come in, is about that redemption plan and what God does to restore us back. It's an amazing thing what God does in Scripture. But I don't want you to miss the Jenga-like breakdown that is summed up. It's like, the, it's like verse 24, Genesis 3 comes, and there's this dust from like when the Twin Towers came down in New York City on that fateful day in September of, you know, 01, when the towers came down, all that dust was reflected of what was left. It's kind of where we are. 
I've got goosebumps. Humanity crashed and burned hard in the sin of Genesis 3. It's hard to overstate it, but it's also equally difficult to overstate the grace God showed by clothing them, by casting them out for our own protection, and for beginning the process, beginning the process right then of restoring them. Good stuff. Send your questions. I'll spend the next couple of days answering them, and I'll do a wrap-up on Friday. If we get more questions I can answer, we'll go into next week. Just let me know. Senior Pastor at acfellowship.org. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for this study. Thanks for the dramatic weight of Genesis 1 through 3. Help us to always celebrate what you've done for us through Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. See you tomorrow.